UFC Prediction Times for the card formerly known as UFC 196 and now known as Fight Night. So Thompson versus Hendricks. Uh, just a quick recap of last night's card. Um, surprised to see Tony Martin actually kind of win a cardio battle. Uh, also interesting to see them talk about Felipe Oliveri, who's a guy pretty deep into his career as like a prospect, and then like Tony Martin's the the opponent, as it were. And it's like, but Tony Martin's really the prospect. Um, there's a good fight there. Uh, I'm going to side with Gaspar Oliver, the referee of the Max Philly versus Jackson fight with the whole idea. They're angry that you got deducted a point for poking a guy in the eye. Like, these eye pokes happen a lot, and at some point are going to cost someone their vision. And this whole idea of, this isn't intentional is bullshit. Um... Also, it's like, so what if he fell them with an illegal knee and then 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 I poked him, I poked him, um, just because it's different. Like you're telling me I can do different fouls and not get a point deducted. I can like bite the guy, then like poke his eye, then like kick him in the balls, then like knee him when he's down, and like all of these fouls. No, 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 because I did it only once. It's not a penalty. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um. Uh, otherwise, nothing else really interesting on the main card. Ben Rothwell, first guy to submit to uh, Josh Barnett. Congratulations. Uh, Yuri Alcantara lost to Jimmy Rivera. Um, Alcantara, gun shy. Not really sure how much you can trust him. Like, still has the physical talent and everything. Like, when he engaged Rivera, it went well for him. And But the largely just back off, back off, don't throw. And it's just not going to work. Um, unless you knock the guy out. Sage Northcutt tapped to a relatively easy-looking submission. Um, it could mean a couple things. I mean, it could mean the whole no heart thing, easy tappings, possibly. But it could also mean he just hasn't been put in that position before, doesn't know how to defend, and panicked a little bit. And that's the thing with him only recently receiving um, top-notch uh, MMA education at TriStar. Um, so we'll see. Uh, what does this mean for him? I mean, <sighs> Northcutt was always going to lose. I mean, he's a... Not this fight specifically, I thought he would win this fight, but like he was always going to lose a fight. He's a 19-year-old fighter who has technical skill gaps in his skill. Of course he does. He's 19. If he was a fully well-rounded out fighter at 19 years old, that's horrifying when he hits his physical prime. Honestly, like I, I don't know. To the haters, I don't know why you ex why you think that this points to like a, a, a downward trend for him because he's 19. He has time. If he takes this well and learns from it, he will be better for it. To the Super Sage Northcut fans, um, realize that this guy is not a top fighter yet. I mean, he has the physical tools. Give him the appropriate time. He may become it. And, you know, he has a lot of money behind him. And, and you know what? If, if he can mentally handle it, he will become a good fighter. But there's no guarantee that he will. Moving on. Uh, Johnson destroyed Vader. Boom. That was the card. Uh, went 7-5-1 and one pick wise. So not terrible, not great. Did poorly on the main card though, one and three. Moving on to this lovely fight card that used to be a pay-per-view and now isn't. You can kind of tell why as I go through this. Opening up the night, we have Mickey Gall versus Mike Jackson. Uh, Mickey Gall is one and O. Oh. Uh, he beat some dude I've never heard of, therefore I don't care. And Mike Jackson is O and O with apparently a loss on his record on the amateur scene. I And he's 30 years old. Okay, okay. I really I really don't care about that fight. The more I look into it, the less I care. Um, Noel Lahad versus Diego Rivas. Our first proper fight of the card. Lahad's running a nice little win streak here, having beaten Super, Super Steve Seiler and uh, Nicholas Backstrom after losing his UFC debut to Godofredo Castro. Uh, before coming to the UFC, he had a win over Shad Smith. It's kind of the highlight of his career. Uh, in the other corner, we have Diego Rivas. His second UFC fight, he defeated Rodolfo Rubio Perez. I don't really know Rivas a lot. I have seen him fight, but I haven't seen him against competition that leads me to believe what he can actually do. Um, I'm going to go with Lahad on this one by decision. Moving on, we have Ray Borg coming off of his own little three-fight win streak and shot. Shane Howell, Chris Colettis, and Gene Herrera after losing his debut to Dustin Ortiz. And he'll be fighting Justin Scoggins, another guy who also lost to <laughs> Dustin Ortiz. Uh, Scoggins has had a bit of a rough run in the UFC. 3-2. and two. 
wins over Richie Voss, uh, Richie Vasilik, Will Capazano and Josh Sampo. Nothing particularly impressive there. But competitive fights with Dustin Ortiz and wasn't looking too bad against John Moraga. I mean, there is definitely something here. Um, I feel he's the more well-rounded of the two fighters. They're both very young. I think 22, 23 years old. Um, neither of them are really at a particularly elite camp, which I think is the kind of the next step in their game that they need to look at. I'm going to go with Scoggins to win a decision. Because I feel his stand-up is better. I feel he's the better athlete. I feel that Borg really needs to get this to the ground to really have success. I think Scoggins can do a decent job of keeping it from going there. That being said, this is kind of a win-win situation. Should be a reasonably exciting fight. We, both of these guys, I think, have bright futures in the UFC. I just think that right now, I have to favor Scoggins. Moving on, Alex White versus Artem Loboff. Alex White to win, but probably by TKO. Um, Loboff is... People are going to love him because he's out of the SBG team. Conor McGregor, Roloff, etc. But Loboff, realistic speaking, has really heavy hands. And that is it. He's not particularly difficult to take down. He's not a particularly great technical striker. I think you can stand with him. You just have to make sure you don't get hit by those heavy, heavy hands. But I don't think he's like especially fast or especially technical on the feet. His ground game is defensively okay, but it's that's about it. Um, I gotta go with Alex White, who is a pretty solid, uh, athlete, very explosive, very quick, stand-up is defensively deficient, which is the concern, because Loboff definitely can knock him out. Um, it should be a good fight, or it could be a potentially really quick fight, but, like, White has a lot more upside, so hopefully we can get Alex White. Alex White could pick up the win here. Misha Serkinov versus Alex Nicholson. Late notice replacement. Um, actually, I think again against for Sir, uh, against Serkinov. Uh, taking Serkinov here to win. Probably decision to possibly a submission. Um, Alex Nicholson is not a bad fighter by any means. And and pretty reasonably big for the weight class, actually. It's like 6'4", 220 something when he fights at heavyweight. Um, so he's not, he's not a small guy. But just not really on the physical level of uh, Serkinov. Not really on the technical level of Serkinov. Uh, Serkinov, super, super prospect that I'm looking forward to seeing the development of. Mike Pyle versus Sean Spencer. It's been a while since we signed Mike Pyle. Um, losing to Colby Covington back in May. And before that, of course, getting knocked out by Jordan Meehan. Um, the question with him is always, like, how... How shop-worn is Mike Pyle at this point? 40 years old, at 170, has not looked super amazing in recent fights. Uh, hasn't had a particularly meaningful win since 2013. Um, I mean, this is the type of fight that Mike Pyle, five to even like three years ago, I would have picked in a heartbeat to dominate, probably win by TKO. Sean Spencer's a good athlete, but his his game has never really fully come together. Um, his biggest win is, you know, Paulo Tiago, who's been pretty shot born himself for a long time. His losses to Alex Garcia, Cathal Pendrel, uh, half on the tall. Um <sighs> I'm going to go with Spencer, but it's under the theory that Mike Pyle just doesn't... That Mike Pyle should retire. That at 40 years old, Mike Pyle should hang it up and take his enormous experience and skill into coaching and see if that works out for him. Because I think like Mike Pyle is the guy I would love to train under. But at this point, I don't, I'm not excited to see him fight. So we'll go with Sean Spencer by decision. Uh, moving on. Derek, the Black Beast Lewis... Uh, coming off a victory over Victor Pesta, which was impressive in the sense that we thought the cardio advantage would be Victor Pesta, but apparently it, it didn't. Um, and he's fighting against uh, Damian Grabowski. This is actually a really similar fight to the one that Derek Lewis just had, actually, in the sense that he's going to be he's going to be ex like the theory is he's going to be exceedingly dangerous for one round. He has amazing knockout power. 
um, but stand-up that is technically not amazing, grappling that is not technically amazing, and, you know, athleticism that is on a high note for heavyweight. Grabowski has not very good stand-up. If you're unfamiliar with him, this is his UFC debut, but he's a 20-2 and fighter who has a number of pretty decent wins over the likes of Konstantin Luhoff, Eddie Sanchez, Dave Huckaba, um, who else would be considerably in that movie? Yeah, a lot of this is really just stuff that people... He's been a guy who's been on the scene for a really long time. Really impressive. His losses are to Marcin Tabura, who's a very good fighter, uh, up-and-comer as well, and Cole Conrad, who, if you're a Bellator fan, you'll recall, was the guy who retired to go into, I believe it was Dairy Futures as a commodities trainer. Um, which, again, if I may if I may point out here, this is the problem when MMA starts talking about how big of a sport it is and how close it is to, like, football, soccer basketball, etc. You don't hear of people being very near the top retiring to go into milk commodities in those sports. <sighs> Although I suppose in fairness, uh, Cole Conrad was not in the UFC. Um, I'm going to take Grabowski to win a decision, but it would not be surprised me if he got knocked out. This is heavyweight MMA. As the Barnett Rothwell fight from the other night once again proved, anything can and probably will happen. Josh Berkman versus KJ Nunes taking Berkman by decision. Easy, easy, easy. Um, Nunes is a good boxer, but that's about the limit of his skill. Berkman is bigger, more well rounded, likes to take things to the ground. Um, I mean, this, honestly, like, it would be a victory for Nunes just to last and not get submitted. or You know what? I'm going to say submission, actually. I'm going to go Berkman to submit KJ Nunes. Joe Benavides versus Zach Makoski. I'm taking Joe Benavides. Benavides is, of course, in the weirdest position in, in that I will probably take him in any flyweight fight that's not against Demetrius Johnson, in all honesty. Um, not that Makoski doesn't have things for him, but, like, Makoski's game is, like, the alpha male game sans the striking. Like, it's scrambles, good wrestling, good positions, variety of chokeholds. Like, that's what Benavides has been training against his entire career, basically. And then you add, that, like, the alpha male striking game picked up with Dwayne Ludwig being there. Yes, Ludwig is not there anymore. Yes, some of the alpha male fighters have sort of regressed. I don't think Benavides is one of them. We have to take Joe Benavides here to win this fight by basically just sprawl and brawl decision thing. And possibly even just out scrambling Mikovsky. Like when, when you look at it, Mikovsky's strongest area is also Benavides' the strongest area. Uh, moving on. OSP, Ovin St. Prue versus Rafael Fajal Cavalcanti. I'm going to take OSP by decision. Um, the reason is is that as much as like this is the type of fight that you would pick Fajal a couple of years ago to win, you know, a really good striker, a really good takedown defense, you know, big knockout power. Like, it, you know, it, it, it's the kind of thing that is begging for a knockout. But Feijiao, during his entire UFC run, has looked terrible. <laughs> Losing to Tiago Silva, Ryan Bader, and Patrick Cummings in relatively one-sided affairs and beating Igor Prokryich, who is Igor Prokryich, let's be honest. OSP has looked pretty good. Uh, he's coming off a loss to Glover Teixeira, uh, which was pretty ugly. But before that, you know, having beaten Patrick Cummings, Shogun Hua, of course, surprisingly enough, Lost to Bader. Both these guys have unanimous decision losses to Bader within the last two years, I think. Um, I'm going to have to go with OSB. Really athletic, really well rounded fighter. Should be able to get this done. The co main event Roy, Roy Nelson versus Jared. Big, the big show, Rosholt. So big country versus the big show. Uh, Rosholt is an ugly fighter to watch. Uh, his wins over Tim Johnson, Stefan Struve, and Josh Copeland, and Saul Palele, and Daniel Olmasik, and Walt Harris have all been pretty ugly. And, you know, in there, there's a loss to Alexei Olenek. <sighs> this is probably the highest profile fight that you can probably think of Rosholt being able to win at this point. Rosholt's not really been able to pick up the striking. He's not really been able to pick up the pace with his wrestling. He doesn't grind you out. He grinds you out, but he does not make you tired. He does not break you. And I think that's the thing that he really needs to work on. Roy Nelson is the better grappler, the better striker, but how much Roy Nelson has in the tank is really questionable um, with him riding a, of course, three-fight losing streak. But, of course, 
you know, those losses are to Hunt, Overeem, Barnett, all very good fighters. But before that, you know, beat Big Nog, lost to Cormier, Miocic, beat Czech Congo. Like, we're... Let's go back to, like, 2012 for his win over Matt Mitrione, I guess, for a guy he beat in his prime. Um, this is tough. Um... I'm going to go with Nelson by knockout. Rochel does leave himself open for big punches. Nelson still has big power in theory. Roy Nelson win by TKO, what is probably a really ugly fight. If Rochel wins, it's by really uninteresting grind down. Johnny Hendricks versus Wonderboy Thompson. Um, I still don't think Wonderboy Thompson's quite ready for this level. I mean, he's got a good, he's got a very good run going here with wins over Jake Ellenberger, Patrick Cote, Robert Whitaker, Chris Clements, and Nance Burrell. But there's just nothing that leads me to believe that he's ready to deal with a wrestler at the level of Johnny Hendricks. Hendricks' stand-up is pretty decent. Um, he packs a lot of power. I don't see him being able to particularly outstrike Wonderboy Thompson because, honestly, not really anyone has been able to. Like, he's a fantastic karate guy, but this is a five-round fight. I see him being ground down and possibly TKO'd in the fourth round. Um, that which is what I'm going to go with. The other thing that goes against this is Wonder Boy apparently was surprised that this was a five round fight when asked about it. Uh, that's concerning with a week to go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we'll go with Johnny Hendricks in the main event to hopefully you know do some things, get back in the title picture, and so on. So ironically, this card falls on my birthday, so. We'll see if I watch it. Depends on what people want to do to drag me around and make me, you know, eat a lot of stuff, which doesn't take a lot of convincing. <laughs> that and you may have kind of picked up. I'm not. There are fights on this card that should be good, like um, White versus Lavoff would be an interesting uh, slugfest. Uh, Ray Borg versus Justin Scoggins is definitely a fight worth watching. I think uh, Makovsky, Benavides will be pretty decent. I think Face Out, OSP could be good. But, like, the co-main event will be probably ugly. The main event will be just not particularly interesting. I mean, you have a lot of, like, just not very good fights like Berkman versus Nunes, Lewis versus Grabowski, Pyle versus Spencer, which should be, like, like, the best thing you're getting out of Pyle versus Spencer is if Mike Pyle still has, like, great knockout power and knocks him out within two minutes, and then it's not sad. Um, that's your best bet. Uh, Serkinov should be a nice showcase fight. Yeah, it's not a great fight card. It's free, so if I'm not doing anything else, I'll be watching it. And uh, later.